Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Ray, and today we're going to talk about angles formed by intersecting chords in a circle. In the last video, we talked about central and inscribed angles. In this video, we're going to generalize that concept to apply to any angle formed within the circle itself. Let's begin with a little challenge. If you already know what a central and an inscribed angle is, then you should be able to solve for x in this picture by adding one chord to the picture. I'd encourage you to pause the video for a minute and really think about this, see if you can work it out. I talk a lot about problem solving strategies, and one of the best is to try to reduce a problem to something you already know how to solve. In this picture, we're being asked to find an angle that's sort of floating somewhere on the inside of the circle. Notice that we don't know where the center of the circle is. It looks like this angle isn't there, but we don't know. So we cannot assume this is a central angle because it would need to have a vertex at the center. Likewise, this is clearly not an inscribed angle because the vertex would need to be on the circle. So the trick here is can we add something to this picture that will generate either some central angles or inscribed angles? And the way to do this is by adding a chord right across either these two bottom intersections or these two top intersections. And as soon as I add that chord, notice that we get a triangle. Not just any triangle, though. Two of the angles in this triangle are inscribed angles in this original circle, aren't they? I mean, take a look at this angle here. This angle is formed by these two chords, which makes it an inscribed angle. The intercepted arc would be this 80-degree arc. That means this angle has to be 40 degrees. This angle is also an inscribed angle, and the intercepted arc would be this 60-degree arc, which means the angle is 30. Notice we haven't done anything aside from adding a chord and then using two inscribed angle relationships. But we now know enough to say what the original angle x in this picture was. Can you see how? x is an exterior angle to this triangle that we created. Remember that if you extend the side of a triangle, the exterior angle is always the sum of the non-adjacent interior angles, which means that x is 40 plus 30, or 70 in this case. Take a minute to just think about how cool that is that we were able to figure out what this angle just sort of floating in the center of the circle was without using anything besides what we already knew and adding this chord to the picture. This angle that we just found, this angle formed by two intersecting chords, is actually going to be the focus of this video. Let's take a step back and look at this from a more general perspective. Here we have a circle with an angle formed by two chords. Notice the chords do not intersect at the center of the circle, they just intersect somewhere on the interior of the circle. We'd like to figure out the relationship between this angle and its intercepted arcs. That's right, I said intercepted arcs. Just like a central angle or an inscribed angle, an angle formed by two chords has an intercepted arc. It actually has two of them. If you remember in the last video, we talked about how if you imagine that the angle were a mouth and it bit down, what part of the circle would get cut off? Presumably, we would all agree that this arc in front of the angle would get bit off. So clearly, that's an intercepted arc. But wait a minute. If I close this side of the angle, won't that also close this side of the angle? These two chords are joined right there at that point. So there's going to be a scissor action here, and in fact, when I close the angle off, these two sides are also going to close off and bite off this part of the circle. So this type of an angle has not one, but two intercepted arcs. There's an arc directly in front of the angle, and there's also an arc directly behind it. Both of these portions of the circle would get cut off if this angle closed down like a mouth. So the question then is, how does this angle relate to the size of its intercepted arcs? Let's go ahead and call the arcs A and B. And then let's do the same thing we did in that challenge problem a moment ago. When I do that, I create a triangle where x, the angle I'm looking for, is the exterior angle. This angle is an inscribed angle to arc B, which means that it's half of B or B over 2. This angle is also an inscribed angle, which means that it's half of A or A over 2. And just like in the last example, the angle we're looking for is an exterior angle to this triangle, which means that it is equal to the sum of the non-adjacent interior angles. That means that x is equal to a over 2 plus b over 2, which is the same as a plus b divided by 2. In other words, x is the average of the intercepted arcs. Another way to say that would be one half the sum of the intercepted arcs. And this is going to be true any time you have an angle in a circle that's formed by two intersecting chords. Now, of course, once we understand this relationship, we don't need to add this chord in every time. We can simply find those two intercepted arcs and take their average to find x. Let's look at a few examples of how this actually works. Here we have about the simplest example that we could start with. We have an angle formed by two intersecting chords, which means that this angle is going to have not one, but two intercepted arcs, one in front of it and one behind it. To find x, I simply take the average of those two intercepted arcs. x is 40 plus 100 divided by 2, 
which is 140 over 2, or 70 degrees. That's all I need to do. Pretty simple, right? What about a picture like this? So the angle x that we're looking for is over here, and there's a very easy trap to fall into. If you recognize x to be an angle formed by two intersecting chords, you might just remember, oh hey, I know that's the average of the two intercepted arcs. You see two numbers here, so you average those two numbers. But you don't want to do that because these aren't the two arcs that are related to this angle. This angle, if it were to close down, is going to have something to do with this arc. This is one of the intercepted arcs, and the other one is behind here. So this 80 is an intercepted arc for this angle. But the other one is this piece over here, which we actually don't know. But that's okay, we can figure it out pretty easily because this line here is a diameter, which means this is half of a circle or 180 degrees. If this is 140 already, then how much do we need to get up to 180? Just another 40, right? And now we have the two arcs that are the intercepted arcs for this angle x. Once I have the two arcs that I'm looking for, I simply take their average, so x is 120 over 2, or 60 degrees in this case. What about a picture like this? We once again have an angle formed by two intersecting chords, which means it's going to be the average of its two intercepted arcs, one in the front and one in the back. We already know the value of one of these arcs. They told us that this one here was 90, but we don't know the value of this one. So how can we figure that out? Well, we have a diameter here, so we do know that if this is 90, this also has to be 90, but that's not the arc we're looking for. The one we need is up here, but they also told us that this large arc is 210. So think about that. If all the way from here around to here is 210, and this piece is 90, then if we subtract 90 from 210, we should get this other piece right here. Taking 90 away from 210 gives us 120, so that green arc is 120, and now we can use this diameter. We know that this is a half circle, so it must be 180. If the green part is 120, that leaves us with another 60 for this red piece over here. And now we have the two arcs that we need for our angle, the arc in front and the arc behind. That means that x is the average of 60 and 90, or 150 divided by 2, which is 75 degrees. What if they tell us the angle and want to know what one of the arcs is? So in this picture, we have a 65 degree angle that's formed by two intersecting chords. That means that that angle is related to these two intersecting arcs, the 80 degree in the front and the x degree in the back. Well, this is enough information to solve for this arc because we know that this angle is the average of these two arcs, so we can set up an equation. We know that 65 has to be equal to x plus 80 divided by 2. There's a few different ways you can solve this. One of the easiest is probably to just put 65 over 1 and cross multiply. Doing that gives us x plus 80 equals 130, which means that x is 50 degrees. So this relationship allows us to solve for an angle or an arc. As long as we can fill in all but one of the pieces of this equation, we can solve for whatever one's left. Take a look at this one. Once again, we have an angle formed by intersecting chords. That 60 degree angle intercepts these two arcs in the circle. They told us that this one over here is 110, and this one over here is x. Do you get the sense that these two arcs have nothing to do with this angle? Yeah, that's exactly what's going on here. They gave us this angle, but they didn't tell us what either one of these two arcs are. And without a diameter or some other way to work around this circle, we can't figure out what these two red arcs are. So what are we going to do? How do we get to this 110 and this x? Don't forget what you already know. This is a straight line, which means that if this angle is 60, doesn't this angle have to be 120? But that angle is another angle formed by two intersecting chords, which means that angle is the average of its two intercepted arcs, the one in the front and the one in the back. So we can use this 120 degree angle to set up an equation. 120 must be equal to x plus 110 divided by 2. Here again, we can solve this a number of ways, but the easiest is probably to just put 120 over 1 and cross multiply. Doing that gives us x plus 110 equals 240, which means x is 130 degrees. So this one was a little bit tricky, right? Because they're trying to misdirect you. They're giving you the lengths of these two blue arcs, and if you take the average of those, you'll get this angle over here, not the 60. So a common mistake with this type of a problem would be to say 60 is the average of x plus 110. That would give you a completely wrong answer, though, because the blue arcs have nothing to do with that 60 degree angle. In order to work with the blue arcs, you have to first find the supplement of that 60 to find the angle that the blue arcs are connected to. And that will about do it for angles formed by intersecting chords. Since this is the second video in the series, let's go ahead and recap what we've talked about so far. In the first video, we learned about central angles and inscribed angles. Central angles had a vertex at the center, were formed by two radii, and were equal to their intercepted arc. Inscribed angles have a vertex on the circle itself, are formed by two chords, and are exactly half of their intercepted arc. 
In this video, we looked at angles formed by intersecting chords. These angles have not one, but two intercepted arcs, and they are the average of those two intercepted arcs. In other words, they're one half the sum of the intercepted arcs, a plus b divided by two. If you need to review either of those two angles, I'll have the link in the description to the last video. And in the next video, we're going to look at angles that are formed outside of the circle. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, feel free to leave a comment below, and as always, have a great day.